So we introduced this concept of punishment and reinforcement. Remember, we can't decide whether a given stimulus is a punishment or a reinforcement. Instead, we always have to look at the consequence. A punishment is something that decreases the frequency of a behavior. A reinforcement is something that increases the frequency of a behavior. Part of the problem we run into when we're using this sort of terminology of learning is that the idea of the, of the terms positive and negative. Generally speaking, students often have the connotations of positive being something good and negative being something bad. In psychology, positive and negative have very specific meanings. You have to forget the idea that positive means good, negative means bad. You have to forget that. Because what's going to happen is you're going to associate the term positive with reinforcement and negative with punishment, and that's going to be wrong. All right, so anytime you see the term positive and negative in psychology, stop and remember it doesn't mean good or bad. Get rid of that association. All right? Burn that into your minds now. Positive does not mean good. Negative does not mean bad in psychology. Instead, they mean two very specific things. Positive means adding something that was not there. Negative means removing something that was. That is it. Nothing else. Where this becomes problematic is when we start talking about things like negative reinforcement or positive punishment. It's a reinforcement whether it's negative or positive, right? Because positive doesn't mean good, negative doesn't mean bad. A positive punishment is not a good punishment, right? That's where the confusion is going to come from. And students often will get very hung up on these terms. But if you just remember, anytime in psychology, positive does not mean good, negative does not mean bad. All it is is describing what we're doing. We're either adding or subtracting. So we can have a positive punishment or a negative punishment. We have a positive reinforcement or a negative reinforcement, right? Because positive does not mean good and negative does not mean bad. A positive reinforcement is when we are adding something to the environment that increases the likelihood of a behavior. This is what we most classically think of as a reward, is when we are giving somebody something to encourage the behavior. For example, if a child does all their homework, they get a cookie. Right? If they get all A's, they get $20. Right? If they don't cry at the doctors, they get ice cream. Right? do a good job at work, you get a bonus, right? Okay? You giving something that is desired. Negative reinforcement is also reinforcement. It's still going to increase the behavior, but it is removing something unpleasant. For example, if a parent is yelling constantly at a child to clean their room and the child then cleans the room, what is the parent going to do? They're going to stop yelling. They have removed something unpleasant. By stopping yelling, that's a reinforcement. It's going to increase the likelihood of the behavior. Right? So negative reinforcement doesn't have any connotation of bad or good. All it is is we are removing something. And since it's a reinforcement, we are removing something undesirable. Positive punishment does not mean something good. Positive punishment means we're just simply adding something. We're putting something into the environment that is going to be punishing, something that is going to decrease the likelihood of behavior. For example, spanking is a form of positive punishment. We're adding something to the environment that is going to decrease the behavior. We can contrast this with a negative punishment, which is removing something from the environment that is desirable. A negative punishment removes something from the environment that the child wants. This might be something like a timeout, right? If you don't behave, you're going on timeout. What are we doing? We are removing things that the child wants, right? If you don't come home on time, we're taking your phone away, right? If you don't get good grades in school, you're going to lose your car, right? If you don't show up to work on time, you're going to lose your paycheck, right? These are things where we are punishing the behavior by removing something desirable, so we can kind of break this down in terms of adding or removing. Positive reinforcement is adding something desirable. Negative reinforcement is removing something undesirable. Positive punishment is adding something undesirable. Negative punishment is removing something desirable. So make sure you're taking a look at this table here. You know, review this video a couple times. I'm going to try to keep it short to make it easy to review because this is one area where students often get confused. I do want to take a moment to talk a little bit about punishment. 
right? What we have found in research over and over and over again, and even Skinner found this when he was working with pigeons, is punishment actually modifies behavior differently than reinforcement. Reinforcement tends to create specific behavioral modifications. You can fine tune behaviors very well by rewarding what you want. Punishment tends to decrease behavior overall. It tends to create, uh, the animal tends to just shut down. It induces fear, avoidance, and other problems. Right? So when we're training like dogs, say for being service animals, punishment is no longer used because it is so ineffective because it can't differentiate specific behaviors. Right? They only use reinforcement. You reward the behaviors you want and you don't do anything for the behaviors you don't want. If you punish the behaviors you don't want, it creates problems. Right? So if you think, for example, of, of a dog who gets into the trash, yelling and screaming at the dog is actually not going to do any good and at most it's going to scare the dog and the dog is just going to hide. It's not going to, it's going to maybe decrease its behavior response, but it's across the board. Instead, if you present the dog with two choices, say the trash and a bin of toys that's allowed to have. And if the dog goes after the trash, you redirect its attention over and over again until the dog goes for the toys. And as soon as the dog goes for the toys, you reward it. And you do that over and over again, and the dog is going to learn very specifically, trash means no reward, toy bin means reward, and it's going to produce a very specific behavior. You might think a little bit about how you would respond at work. If you had a boss that said, you know, for every day you come in on time, we're going to give you more money. Are you going to respond well to that? Are you likely to come in on time? Are you going to feel happier and have a higher morale about that? Let's contrast that with a boss that if you show up late, reams you, screams at you, yells at you, docks you pay, gets mad at you, makes you feel terrible. Are you going to show up on time? Well, maybe, right? But it's not nearly as strong of a response. And how do you begin to feel about that job? How's your productivity? How's your morale? Are you going to go above and beyond for a boss that's constantly putting you down and screaming at you, who's constantly deducting pay? Are you going to start looking for a new job to get out of that situation? Right? Using specifically defined reinforcement tends to elicit the behaviors we want. Using punishment tends to produce problems. Right? And so, unfortunately, we have all this research, we have these personal experiences, and yet for some reason we often focus heavily on punishment and modifying behavior of children. And the research suggests this just doesn't hold out and that it should be avoided.